I'm Deep Mahaman and you're watching The Red Men TV. I am Chris Payzak for The Red Men TV and this is the uncensored match reaction, the considered version, the elongated version, the one with the fan reactions in. Oh yes, that's right. So format of the show, much the same as last week. Um, I'm going to read out 10 comments from the YouTube video that we left last night. I'm going to give you my review of the game. We're going to go to the papers in a new bit of the show because basically I bought two fucking papers this morning to read. You know what I mean? I thought, oh, I don't want to waste my money. I'll read them out to you guys. You guys want to know what's in the papers, don't you? See, there we go. And then finally, it's the comment of the week. The one, the big one, the one that everybody's been waiting for. Anyway, I'm going to fucking shut up, stop filling time and get straight into the comments, okay? Top of the list. Poor for 70 minutes, but when Alan and Lambert came on, the game changed instantly. Johnson needs a layoff after a long summer for him. Manquilo and Moreno for the City game. You'll never walk alone. Uh, just going to pick up on the final point of that one. Manquilo and Moreno for the City game. Definitely think that Moreno needs to start. I've got a feeling, and I don't want this to be true, that Glenn Johnson is going to start at right back. Anyway, we'll talk about Glenn Johnson more later on in the show. Uh, Will M thinks Skirtle never gets the credit he deserves. Absolutely unbelievable performance today. I think you're right there, Will. Um, Lovren, rightly so, got deplored to the centre of defence um, because of the stick that he was getting from Southampton, the assured performance that he put in. But Martin Skirtle was assured and absolutely brilliant. And there's one thing about Skirtle, he's going to give you 110% every time he plays. Look, Lucas lost a man for the first goal by Klein, but Skirtle still nearly got there. He covered about 10 yards in about two seconds, trying to sprawl in front of the ball and only just missed it. Anyway, Carl Cullen, I know the match put my blood pressure through the roof, but if you look back two to three years ago, that was a match we would have drawn or lost I think you're right um, look even going through yesterday it was a nervous atmosphere at Anfield because the game mattered so much you know I said in my match reaction after the game that every point matters this early on in the season because we know it's going to be so tight come the end of the season um, but as you say two to three years ago we'd have probably drawn or lost that game and I think it's you know Southampton had the momentum they scored um, and then the Southampton crowd got behind them our crowd went a bit dead and then measure of our team really and the character that we showed to then get back into the side and then go on and get the winner through Daniel Sturridge so that, that pleased me um, Mohamed Ahmed Joe is always a tank whenever he comes on but it seems like he can never keep that level up when he starts matches yeah Joe Allen was brilliant when he came on yesterday I thought he changed the game I still think there's a lot to come from Joe Allen in a Liverpool shirt you know, every time he's sort of got a run of games under his belt, he's had an injury. And I just want to see Joe play 15, 20 games for us and see where he is. You know, I think he's going to be an exceptional player for us, whether that's as a squad player coming in in, in, in important games or as a starter, I'm not too certain yet. But I think there's a part to play for John at Liverpool. Uh, anyway, it's Batty Boy 81. Okay, sorry, that's probably Beatty Boy 81, isn't it? Minulay is as safe as sex without a condom. I'm not even going near the uh, the sexual innuendos and shit in your comments. But what I will say is Minulay made like four world-class saves yesterday. Uh, one against Morgan Schneiderlin at the end where he tipped it onto the bar. And uh, look, that was pretty fucking safe. That was like a Chris Packett's Femi Dom or whatever you're talking about, you know what I mean? That was like crunchy and it hit the side and it bounced back. What the fuck am I going on about? Anyway, I'm gonna have to steer back onto me. And you're like, so we did look, he flaps across his, do you know what I mean? He's like he's like a whore getting paid. He's fucking flapping all over the place, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? But and when the ball's at the feet, he's not very good. But when you want a genuine shot stopper, there's no better keeper in the league than Sam Minule. Tom's laughing behind camera like, what are you saying, lad? Does your mum watch this? Yes, she does. And I'm really sorry, mum. Uh, really, really sorry. Anyway, L Atkinson, 33. Think Khan, Sacco and Alan should come in for Lucas. Skirtle, I'm afraid to say, Stevie, his legs looked like they were gone. Um, Skirtle, I thought he had a good game. I can't believe he said that, Lucas. Yeah, he looked a bit tired, especially for the first goal. And Stevie G, man, it's a, it's at the back of all of our minds, isn't it? It's like a taboo subject to mention Stevie G leaving the side. Uh, I think we've got the players that we can cover for him. But that being said, Stevie G is integral to the part that we play, in my opinion. Um, his passing, his set pieces, he's still got game, man, do you know what I mean? I think it's more important to find somebody who can play next to him. Lucas, I think we all know over the last few years that he's not the person to play next to Steven Gerrard. Uh, we need someone, maybe when Lallana or Markovic come into the side further up the pitch, Henderson could be the person to play next to Steven Gerrard, or maybe even Joe Allen, do you know what I mean? Maybe Jordan Henderson's like, I've always wanted to be Steven Gerrard's legs. Yes, yes, I will. But are we saying, you know, Jordan Henderson's had a fucking cracking 
couple of games further up the pitch, so do you want to lose him up there? I'm not too certain anyway. Um, Josh McCabe, as much as there were many positive, three points is three points, and that's all that's required in the opening game. Thought the performance is screaming to Rogers that a striker and holding midfielder is still vital. As I said just a minute ago, I I, I think a striker is definitely needed, but a holding midfielder, I think we've got players at the club who can fill that position. If we sell Lucas, yeah, I think we need a holding midfielder. What I'd like to pick up from there is a very, very good point. It's the three points is what's required from the opening game. Southampton have been a bogey team of ours for a few years now. And I think Rodgers just said to the players, look, get out there, get the fucking three points. We can expand on our play and become more fluid and stuff and, you know, and express ourselves later on in the season. But right now, it's about getting the three points. Peter! Lucas and Gerrard tried to play the same position, which made the balance in our midfield lopsided. Also, Southampton clearly marked Tino out of the game and two deep mids in a high defensive line. So, when he got space, he almost tried too hard and messed up stuff. He would usually bail every time. Yeah, Phil Coutinho had a tough day yesterday. Obviously, he was hooked uh, for Lambert uh, later on in the second half. Not that he had a bad game as such, but as you say, he was just, he was just marked out of the game. I think last season, we, we all. We were excited about continuous performances and made up with what a player he is. And, and the preseason, he had no one could touch him. But I think it's important to remember that last season in the Premiership, we had Luis Suarez and he was taking two to three players from the defence and the defensive midfield to really sort of mark him out the game. Phil Coutinho and Raheem Sterling getting a lot of space. I think Rodgers' comments in preseason that Coutinho is the brains of the operation has probably hindered him a little bit yesterday because Southampton have seen him and gone, bang, that's the man we need to stop to stop Liverpool playing football as he matures and experiences it more and more he will know and he will work out ways to get away from that and that's when we'll see him come really good look it's the first game of the season he was under massive pressure um, he still had an alright game I think we've got more to come from Coutinho anyway Mad bird, bit nervy, but all that matters at this point is three points. United lost, Arsenal and Tottenham struggled, City didn't look impressive, we'll be fluent as fuck in a few weeks. And don't forget we have Lalana, Markovic and Moreno to come up yet. Yeah, feel good story at the end for all those comments. Um, so my review of the game, I'll try not to cover anything that I've already talked about. Obviously I was going to talk about Sam Minule, but we've talked about that. Dejan Lovren was brilliant at the back, I think he did really well against the Grok that is the new Pele. Like fucking hell, I was expecting some like little flair guy do you know what I mean on the pitch giving us his samba skills and stuff just, no I'm Pele big guy kick ball hard but Dejan Lobden did really well against that Glenn Johnson fucking hell man Um Everybody talked about it in the fan reactions, didn't they? Uh, three minutes into the game, I turned around to Alex, who I'm sat with, I'm like, listen, fucking hell, the crowd are on his back already, do you know what I mean? Look at this. He's not even done anything wrong yet. Yeah, he's had a bad pre-season, so, but we need to get behind him. He's a Liverpool player, 55 minutes in, I'm like, kill him! Kill him now! Do you know what I mean? But look, we, I'm, you know, I've had a day to think about it. He didn't have a great game, but look, there was one tackle. Klein nearly scored the second goal, and that was a world-class tackle, do you know what I mean? He's not the player that he was, He's still a Liverpool player, and I would like to see Moreno start. But if he's on that pitch, I'm going to fucking support him. And I, you know, it's hard when you're caught up in the moment to do that because you're a fan, and so much of it matters to you. But we've got to try and do that, especially like on social media. There's dickheads giving him all kinds of stuff on social media, and we've got to stop that shit. You know what I mean? Raheem Sterling was absolutely superb again, explosive. The ball by Jordan Henderson. Brrr, the subs nearly got it in the back of the head there for me. Do you know what I mean? That that was some ball like Ricky Lambert like that. What's that in the air there? Like that. Hey! Hello! <laughs> um, Phil Coutinho, we've already talked about, and Daniel Sturridge, man. Right place at the right time, that's what you want your striker to do. I think he got more points than any other player for us last season on vital goals. He's done the same again this season. He won the first game last season, he's won the first game this season. Absolutely brilliant. Quickly, onto the papers. Echo Sport, Super Simon, Lambert Hales, Minulay Savers, Reds, hold on to open and win. Fucking superb, that. Uh, and the mirror. Bold statement, the narrative all weekend, and we kind of forgotten this, is that Liverpool aren't going to be as good without Luis Suarez and blah, 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 fucking blah. But guess what the mirror ran with? Who needs Suarez? Bold statement, you know what I mean? Rodgers, we can win the title without hotshot Louis. Um, 
But I think we can. I really do. But don't forget that Luis Suarez sent the boys a text yesterday. Rogers said for the game, wishing them luck. So that's a testament to the man that he is. Uh, and finally, the big one. The one that everyone's been waiting for. I've mixed it up this week. It's not an hilarious one like last week. And I don't just want to do them. I think this is a really exceptional point. This is by LFC Jonathan 14. Lovren was excellent. Sterling was decisive. But quite rightly, Henderson man of the match. He's shown real bite in midfield. I loved his little word with Tadic, who was exceptional at the start his break up play and pass for Stern's goal was world class to be honest I couldn't see another centre midfielder in the league doing that also we saw in pre-season the ladders getting forward to great effect and his partnership with that Manquilo down the right hand side looks good at both ends roll on City you'll never walk alone uh, top insight there, Jonathan, mate. Um, as you say, that, that fucking passes, you know, I waxed a little about it before and I waxed a little bit of something else as well, do you know what I mean? But, look, it really was an exceptional ball. It was left-footed, he won two tackles first, man. Jordan Henderson, man of the match for me, man of the match for Jonathan. Jonathan. And what a good game to start the season. Yes, it was nervy, but we got the three points. That's all that fucking matters. Roll on the Etihad and Man City. We're coming for your title, boys. We are fucking Liverpool and we are coming for you. I'm Chris page like for the red men tv leave me your comments in the comment section below give us the video a big thumbs up and don't forget to share the video cheers very much have a good day yeah um yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think i think i shit myself twice <laughs> <laughs>